I'm Meg Ray, and welcome to another World Edit Guide in which I will be talking about how to set up basic World Edit brushes and how to configure them for different uses. Whether you consider yourself a beginner or an expert World Edit user, I hope you're able to learn something from this tutorial. So let's start with the two main brushes you'll ever use or ever even need, probably. A sphere brush and a cylinder brush. So let's start with the sphere brush. You can bind a brush to any tool that you want, so I'm going to be using a variety of tools just to demonstrate that. So with your tool in hand, we'll start by doing slash brush or BR, and then type out the shape, which is sphere, you can also do S for short. Next is the name of the block or the block's ID, and then the size of the brush or the radius of the sphere. And when you enter that, now that command is bound to your tool. So you can just start clicking around and placing spheres wherever you want. You can stack them on top of each other or whatever. Pretty straightforward. It works the same way for a cylinder brush. We're just going to change up our command a little bit by doing a cylinder instead of a sphere or sill for short. Our block type, and then we're going to enter two sizes here. One for the radius of the cylinder and one for the height. So let's enter that and just start clicking around and you can see we have our five block radius with 10 block high cylinder. Actually, it would be 11 blocks in diameter, which I explained in my previous video on cylinders and other shapes. So those are the two main brushes that you'll probably ever need to use in World Edit. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about something else now. Remember that when we do enter these commands, we're actually binding it to a tool. So once it's bound to the tool, it will always remain the same unless you change it up. And there is a way to change it up without having to re-enter the full command. And I'm all for saving time when I'm working on stuff. So if you want to change the size of something, let's go ahead and take my sphere brush. So if I just enter the command size with a new number, that will just change just the size on our brush. Now this command is only changing the radius though, so if you're trying to change the size of a cylinder, it's only going to be changing the radius and not the height. If we want to change the material that we're using, I would just do slash matte and then the new block type. So those are just some basic ways you can just change up the brush without having to retype the command. It will still retain the original shape, so if you wanted to change the shape, you would have to re-enter the command completely. Next, we're going to discuss masking on brushes because this is what happens. Whenever you brush somewhere, it is just replacing everything in that radius with that block. So it even places stuff underground if you're brushing directly on top of the ground. Here's a quick example of all of that gold I had just placed removed and look what it did to the ground. It is so destructive. That is not nice. I don't like that. This can be avoided very easily by just using some masks. So with our sphere brush, let's go ahead and give it a mask of zero, which is air, meaning it will only be placing the blocks where there is air present. So this is only affecting those air blocks. It's not affecting anything underneath of it. I mask air all the time also when adding an organic on top of another organic, for example, like I have done in the past. It's just a very nice non-destructive way to work around other blocks. So with that in mind, if I went over here and brushed over all of these cylinders, with the mask on, so it won't be going into the cylinders, it's just placing the blocks around them. If I just replace those diamonds with zero, they're gone and nothing happened to the cylinders. If you want to turn off your mask and have it not masking anything, then you'll just do slash mask again to disable it. The difference between a mask and a G mask is a regular mask is bound to that brush, whereas a global mask will apply to any command you use. So you use the regular mask when you want a specific mask for that brush. The nice thing about that is then you can have different brush configurations with different masks, and then they don't conflict with each other and you don't have to keep resetting them. Whereas a global mask is global and it's always there and it applies to everything. I need to stop getting ahead of myself, but if you did want to learn more about masking, I do have another video that kind of goes into more about masks, but for now, let's talk about how you can use them to create a paintbrush. So I have a parrot here that is completely white, and we're going to use brushes to paint it. I already have my sphere brush set up, so I'm just going to change the material to a different block that I want to use for my paint. So let's just use red wool and now in order to actually make it only affecting those white wool blocks, we're going to do mask 35, which is wool. So when I do that, 
Now I can start painting on top of the wool and it's only affecting those blocks. Let's change things up a bit now. Let's use two different colors as my paint. So I'm going to change my materials to two different colors of wool. We'll do 50% each for those, then start painting and we'll see how this looks. So just as expected, we're painting with 50% of each block, but do you notice how it's replacing all of the wool with every stroke? That's because I have my mask set for just 35, when I should actually be specifying what color I want to mask. Something I actually forgot to do. So if I were to change my mask to 35-0, which is white wool, then I'll only be affecting the white wool, and then I don't have to worry about painting over all those colored blocks. Okay, just for fun, let's change the mask back to what it was, and we'll just mask over wool, which is 35. So we're going to be painting over all different colors of wool, and we'll just pick a different material here. And then we can easily paint over a lot of the same type of block. As long as you're playing ahead, I can see this being very useful. However, if you're looking for the most efficient way to paint something, I would just use the plugin Go Paint. You can just go download it. And it has a super easy interface for setting your masks and your paints, and you can change the brush shapes, and there's so many more configurations you can do with it, and it's just a lot easier. But if you're not into doing it the easier and more versatile way, then you can do it in regular world edit, as I have just shown you. So we've talked about the two basic shape brushes, how to paint with those brushes, and now we're going to talk about how you can smooth the shape with the smooth brush. So with my little mountain that I have created here using cylinders, I'm just going to use the command BR smooth with the size of the brush, and that's all we have to type in. And then we can just start brushing. Now this isn't the best smoothing tool in my opinion, I'm just showing it to you because this is the world edit smoothing tool. By far not the greatest at smoothing something, but this is just for demonstration. So I can start brushing on this mountain and it will start smoothing off the edges. It kind of looks like it's just pulling the ground up to that point and then just kind of cutting off the corners. It almost smooths it a little too much in places or not enough. It just keeps going until the top and the bottom are connected. That's the best way for me to describe it. So it's not actually pushing the mountain or shrinking it down. It's just smoothing it enough to where the top and the bottom connect. And then it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to smooth anymore. So in that regard, that's one reason why it's not my favorite smooth tool to work with. Aside from the smooth brush, you can in world edit just select an entire area and do the command smooth. And it does the same thing, but it just doesn't do it all at once. So you might have to run it a few times for it to actually connect that top portion to the bottom portion and completely smooth it. So it's not the most efficient way to smooth something in world edit, but I just wanted to point that out as an alternative command. Here's a few tips if you want to reshape this terrain using just world edit. We can have a perfectly smooth mountain, but we can't change the shape very easily unless we create an airbrush to carve into it. So what I could do is create an airbrush that will carve air into the mountain, and I could set the mask to stone because I don't want it to really carve into anything else. And then I can just carve into the mountain and use my smooth brush to smooth it over and try to reshape this. I can also just switch back and forth between all of these brushes, my cylinder brush to place more stone, my smoothing tool to smooth it over, and then the carving brush to try to get the shape I want. It's not the best way to make terrain, but if World Edit is the only plugin you're using, that's how I would go about doing it. If you made it to the end of this video, then you have a lot of patience, so good job for you. I hope you were able to learn something in the very least, but that's all I have for you for this tutorial. Feel free to check out my playlist of other World Edit tutorials if you want to learn more about it. Thanks for watching and happy building!